Hi everyone and welcome back to another session of API testing using Postman. In our last session, we went through put method and in today's session, we will cover the batch method. So first of all, we will see that what is a batch method. Then we will take an example. Next, we will see the difference between put and batch method. And in the end, we will see what's today's assignment. Okay, so let's first have a look at what is a batch method. So a batch method is used to send data to a server to apply partial update to a resource. So it means that whenever we have to make any changes partially to a resource, we will use batch method. It only required to send the data to be updated, which means that if uh, in a given resource, we need to just change one attribute, then we just need to send that attribute and that will be changed at the server side. Nothing else will be affected, which means that the only thing which we want to change on the server, only that uh, thing will be changed and nothing else will be affected. For example, email address of a user in a database. So if we want to update, uh, we want to change the email address of a user in a database. So instead of sending the entire uh, details of, um, of that user, we will just uh, send the email address which needs to be updated and nothing else will be affected. So let's go uh, to Postman and then uh, let's run an example. Okay, so we have opened our Postman instance. So over here, first of all, we will select the patch method from here. We will use the same uh, website which we were using earlier. And from here, we will see the patch, the update request. Let's just copy this URL. and paste it over here then we'll go back and uh, just copy the body as well so if you see the request url and the body um, uh, we need the body uh, just like we needed it in the put method as well and also the url is quite similar to what it was in the put method so we'll select body, then raw over here, JSON, and we will paste this request. So now we are just sending the attributes which we want to change in this location for this user, which means that uh, we uh, the user which has an ID of two, we just want to change, we want to update name and job. and when we will send this request, we have got a successful response, which means that the name and job has been updated and this is the timestamp. So this is uh, just to show that how the patch method works. And um, let's now go back to our slides and uh, let's see it in much detail um, because if you can see that put and patch method, uh, it's quite similar. So it's important to understand that what's the difference. So let's go back to our slides. Okay, so let's understand that what's the difference between put and patch method. So it's very common that uh, it's thought that put and patch do the same thing as the main function of both of these methods is to update a resource which is right. But in reality, these two methods are doing the same thing, which is updating a resource at a specific location, but they do it very differently. So let's have a look at how, um, how these two methods work at the server side. So this screen, it's I've taken an example of a shopping mall. So let's say that in a shopping mall, there are different shops and each shop has their own location like shop one, shop two, shop three. So these are the URLs and each shop has few attributes like name, owner, color, door, floor, ceiling. So each shops are different. Okay. 
So now let's see that if we want to update any attribute, then how it will work uh, using put and patch method. So first of all, let's see the put method. So we have this, we are changing the shop one and over here we have all the original resources that we have the name shop A, owner, color, door, floor, ceiling. And now we want to update only one attribute, which is the door. So instead of one door, we want to change it to two doors. So what we will do, we will send the put request with, with all the original resource and we will just change the number of doors over here. And as a response, we will get this which means that it has not changed anything else, but it has updated the number of doors over here. Okay, so now uh, you would see that how, how it worked. When we are making a put request, the enclosed entity is viewed as the modified version of the resource saved on the server, and the client is requesting to replace it. So that's why we are sending the entire uh, resource as well, not only the door. Uh, so in this example, as the changes were not huge and the entire code was not huge, so it didn't make much difference. But for larger and more complicated objects or resources, it can be a very, very tedious job and it might utilize unnecessary bandwidth as well. Uh, but this is on this on the other hand this is a very safe method so uh, as you would remember that a put request can also create as well so let's say that when we sent this put request and um, it was not existing the shop one was not existing then it would have created this entire shop with all these resources and, uh, and this is why it is idempotent as well, which means that every time uh, when we will send the uh, request, we will get the same response. So this is the put request that every time we have to send the, uh, the entire attributes, everything, even if we are changing one attribute, we have to uh, send the entire, um, entire attributes. And uh, let's have a look at the patch method now. So if we have the same example, shop one, we want to change the number of doors to two. Over here, we can't create, we can just update. And we are partially updating. And partially updating means that now, instead of sending the entire um, original resource, all we will do is we will just send the attribute which we need to change, which is door to two. So we will send this and as a response, as you can see that nothing else is affected and the doors have been updated from one to door two. So just to understand that over here with patch method, the enclosed entity, it sends a set of instructions that describe how a resource is stored on the original server should be partially modified to create a new version. So in simple words, we can say that a put method replaces a resource while a patch method change a resource. And uh, uh, we know that a patch method doesn't create an instance. So let's say that if uh, this resource didn't uh, exist on the server and we sent a patch request with this only door 2 and uh, it didn't exist then we will receive an error and uh, why so because just imagine that it didn't exist and we just sent um, this attribute door 2 then it would be um, it wouldn't make any sense that uh, a shop didn't exist and all it has created is a door over there just imagine a shop with just a door and nothing else so that's why patch method is uh, is used when we just want to update one resource one attribute partial so we are updating a resource partially while for put we um, 
it's more of a like a replacing the entire original resource and this is why uh, put is idempotent patch can be idempotent but usually it's not but of course depending on how it's implemented uh, it can be but uh, by default it is not required to uh, so that's why when we are creating any um, any api based on the design and what's required uh, we choose either put or patch method so i hope that uh, this is clear and the more you will use, uh, the more you will play around with both of these methods, you can understand that uh, how both of these work. So for the assignment, uh, I would like you to go to this uh, website. On this website, there are uh, many, um, actually I will show you. Okay, so this is the website and over here, I would like you to try this patch method over here. So try this request and uh, then let's see that uh, what response you get. So before that, uh, create a post method as well to post and then try put as well and then try patch as well. And if you have any kind of issue, then yeah, do let me know. So that was all for today's session. In next session, then we will go through another request, which is the delete request and um, um, delete method. And this would be the last uh, in the uh, types of methods which we'll be covering. There are many other types as well. If you see, if you go to Postman and if you see, there are many, many other uh, types of methods as well. But uh, in, um, in this uh, course, we are just uh, touching base uh, to the ones which we use very very often so we have covered few of them and the last one which is the delete method we will cover in the next session so i hope that you found today's session useful um, do practice um, it yourself as well using postman you can use this website and also the one which we just used and then let me know your feedback so see you in the next session till then take care